Welcome back, everybody. This is Chris Mann with another Producer's Cut. To kick off the show today, I want to read a review that came in recently from Pretty Cool. It's titled, This Podcast Has Helped Me Tremendously. Felicia is a delightfully insightful career coach who has the experience and receipts, y'all. She empowers us with information and stories that help set ourselves up for success. Thanks to her amazing podcast, I've recently transitioned out of a toxic environment into a welcoming space for black folks. I love my job so far, and I'm making almost double now. Thank you, Felicia. You're incredibly talented, beautiful, and fierce. But most of all, the trillist. Much love and support to you, sis. Heart emoji. Okay, guys, I have two episodes lined up for you this week and next that are really important for this time of year. This week's is a Q2 check-in, and you'll have three points of homework to do over the month of July just to make sure that even if the first half of the year hasn't gone like you wanted, it has, it hasn't, whatever, it's going to help you make sure that the next half of your year goes as good as it can be. And like Felicia says, she's going to try and help you get your best possible outcome. And next week is all about managing up or managing your manager. And it's crazy because Felicia goes through like seven different boss types and how to manage each. It's a fabulous episode. So this week and next, super important. Be sure to tune in and hope you enjoy the episodes. Welcome to the Trill NBA show. I'm your host, Felicia Ann Rose A. Nuha, a.k.a. the trillest NBA you will ever know. And I'm here to help you survive and thrive in corporate America by giving you the truth and being as real as only I can be. Happy Sunday, y'all. I'm so excited about this episode. What I need you guys to be focused on is the fact that we are at the halfway point of the year. In fact, at this point, we're a little bit past the halfway point of the year. So how are you tracking? Are you going to hit your deliverables by the end of the year? Are you working toward your next promotion? How is everything going at your job? Today, I'm talking about what you need to do to set yourself up for success for the rest of the year. So even if the first half hasn't started out so well or it hasn't gone as planned, it's okay. Take a minute, breathe in, breathe out. Woosa, it's okay. I have intentionally created these next three points of homework. Yes. I'm giving you homework for you to implement this month, July, today. Okay? You're going to start today. So my goal is that you go to work with intention and you make your plan to thrive. So let's get started. First, we're going to talk about your annual objectives. I know, I know. Everybody hates doing them. It's like tedious and it feels unnecessary because you know the shit gonna change. But listen, gotta play the game. Gotta stay focused. And your annual objectives are a weapon that you can use to your advantage. Okay, listen, I want you to take some time out, block it out on your calendar. Do it while you're at work. Do not take this crap home, okay? Boundaries. I want you to pull out your calendar and I want you to pull out your annual objectives. I also want you to pull out your mid-year check-in if you had it already. You should have had it by now. If you haven't, Email me, let me tell you the things you need to do and say so you make sure you cover your ass, okay? All right. Now, what you want to do is you want to take the objectives that were set for the fiscal year 2019 and you want to look at what you've been working on. That's why you need your calendar. You also need any project trackers. Do these two things match? 
does your annual objectives actually marry up to what you've been doing the past six months? Hopefully you said yes. If you said no, here's what we gotta do. Okay, listen, we all know that things change. That's okay. Business is fluid. There's nothing wrong with changing course, changing directions, doing test and learn. What you don't want to get caught up in is at the end of the year, you had all these objectives, then they had you doing everything but that. And then now your boss is looking at you like, well, why didn't you do all of that? And you want to be like, because motherfucker, you told me to do all that other shit. So that's what I did. I ain't got time to do all that and all that. And he's going to be like, but that's what we pay you for. And you're going to be like, son of a bitch. But you can't get mad. Why? Because you know what's on this paper. Okay? It's on the paper. So you need to make sure you're tracking to the paper and what's in the system. So if your manager has pulled you into a different direction, changed your workload or business priorities, you need to have your objectives formally updated to reflect that change now. Do not wait. Do not pass go. You ain't going to collect $200, okay, if you don't do this now because they will hold you accountable to what was written, not what you actually did. And then they're going to try to give you feedback like, oh, Felicia, you know, we just don't feel that you are managing your priorities correctly. Mm -hmm. So this is your homework. You need to stay focused on what you align to with your manager. Remember, documentation is a tool and a weapon, okay? So either you are going to control it to your advantage or you are going to let them use it against you. But either way, guess what, boo? You have the power. Take it, use it, own it. And then the other thing, you need to identify which objective you should present to senior leaders to gain more visibility. So as you're looking at all your objectives and it's just worker bee, worker bee, worker bee, worker bee, worker bee, and know like, hey, let me go show this off. This is high visibility. This is important. Then you need to make sure you knock all that stuff that's the worker bee stuff out the park. But then you need to go back to your boss and say, hey, You know, I'm doing all this great work, but nobody's going to know about it because all these things are just keeping the business running and it's not actually a project to move the needle. So what can we do to bring visibility to the contribution and value that I'm bringing to the company? Right? Like you need to figure that out. Now, if you do have a project where you've identified like, oh, this objective is a priority for the company and I'm right here. This is a sweet little project. I'm going to knock it out the park. So either you need to be planning to present it to senior leaders so you can gain more visibility or you need to figure out how as you're working the project, you create these opportunities for update meetings with senior leaders. So you're bringing them along before you have the final output. And the great thing about bringing them along is, let's say some shit change. Well, they could tell you right then and there. So you don't have to wait for your boss to try to figure shit out. You can be right in the mix. Blood out. If you don't have at least one of these high visibility projects, you need to get with your manager in your next one-on-one. And you need to have an honest discussion to say, hey, I really would like the opportunity for more visibility with leadership. Can you help me with that? They should say yes. And then you say, okay, I'm going to think of a couple of things. Maybe you could null on it or chew on it. And then next week, let's together flesh out what the right plan of attack is. Whether you hate this boss or you love this boss, whatever, that don't matter. Let that go. Get what you need to get. Okay? Okay. So that's what you need to be doing with your annual objectives. When we come back from the break, I'm going to talk about how you should assess 
analyze and understand the influence and power dynamics in your job and why at this juncture in the halfway of the year, you really need to work on that to set yourself up for the rest of this year. We'll be right back. Okay. Now, before the break, we discussed your first part of your homework, which is to make sure your annual objectives are still relevant and tied to the actual work you are getting done. In addition, you are supposed to take the opportunity to make sure and align that that's still good with your boss, as well as ask them for opportunities for visibility with senior leaders. So that was part one of your homework. So part two of your homework is that you are going to spend some time assessing, analyzing, and understanding the influence and power dynamics at your company, okay? Or the company you work at, rather, because... Unless your name is on the building, (laughs) you know what this is. So now you need to do the following. Number one, you need to get an org chart. And listen, this is where having a relationship with your admin or the admin that supports your team is critical Because even if they're not supposed to give it to you, if they really like you and you promise not to share it, guess what they going to do? They going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. Because especially if you tell them what you're trying to do with it, like you're trying to understand, you know, how to manage your career and how to manage up. And I was listening to this podcast. You should listen to it. You know, y'all should share the podcast with them and say, Felicia said to ask you for the org chart. So that's what I'm doing because I'm trying to get a promotion and things. Okay. So listen, if you can't get your hands on an org chart, then you're going to have to take the time and painstakingly create one for yourself with the information that you know. And you start with your team. You start where you are and you draw that little line and draw a box around your boss. And then does your boss have peers? Draw them boxes to them. You know, who's your boss's boss? Who's his boss? And on so forth and so on. And then you as many people as you can and you flesh that out. Who's all on your team? Who's your peers? Do you have direct reports? Put them bad boys in there too. They count. Even though they might get on your nerves sometimes. You know you love them. So make yourself this org chart. And especially pay attention to the changes that were made. So that's step two. After you get the org chart somewhat done or you grab one from somebody or you figure it out. Now you need to pay attention to what has changed and who changed roles. You got to think about who got promoted and who's reporting to who now. All that is not by happenstance. People were in rooms, talking in hushed tones, being assholes, most likely, and doing their little juju to fit their agenda. So part of this is you trying to figure out what is their agenda and how can I fit into it to get in this succession pipeline so I can get promoted too. That's what this is all about, rising the ladder, okay? So now the third thing you want to do after you think you've thought through and figured out in your head how things changed, now when you have your one-on-one with your boss, you want to ask your manager for more context around all these changes. You want to pick his brain. I know a lot of people hate that phrase, but it just works so well. So basically, you want to probe your boss around what he or she thinks the changes mean for the organization. Is there going to be a change in strategy? How should we look at our objectives now? You know, ask for more context around the big picture now versus what the big picture was before. 
So you want to get as much information as you possibly can. This is important. Information is power. The more you know, the more you grow. Now, you need to understand where your objectives fit in for the balance of the year, how they fit into this big picture your boss is going to talk about. You also need to know that once you know you are going to meet the expectations on your objectives, so you're like, okay, my objectives are good. I'm going to hit it. That's going to work out. Then what you need to do is identify some low-hanging fruit that ties to the big picture priorities that you could get executed before the end of the year. So it should either help save the company money or make the company money, and it should fit within the strategic priorities of the big picture. And if you do that, you are on your way to the fast track. So now, that was a lot of homework, but I got one more thing I need you to work on, especially if you are trying to get promoted. And we'll talk about that right after this break. All right, we are back and you have your last piece of homework that I expect you to implement if you are trying to rise this corporate ladder. So your first piece of homework was your annual objectives and analyzing and making sure they still matter (laughs) and that they marry up. Then it's assessing your new corporate dynamics. Who's the influencers? Who are the power players? Has the company strategy changed? How do I fit into that? Okay, that's the second part of your homework. The third part of your homework is going to take the most amount of time. So you want to just focus on it a little bit every day. It should become a natural part of your every day. And that is building relationships. Yeah, I knew I was going to say this. You had to know. If you didn't know, you're not listening to the show enough. So my question to you. Have you dedicated enough time to relationship building? Hello, friend. You guys, I know. I know. Listen, it is hard, okay, to be in these spaces sometimes as a Black woman, as a person of color, as anybody who does not identify cisgender white man, right? We know this. And the sad part is <laughs> even some of the cisgendered white men are just struggling too <laughs> because corporate America is that bitch. <laughs> It comes for all of us in different ways. But I want you to stay focused on your goals. So now, after you do the assessment of your company's org chart, the power players, business strategy, I want you to identify the people that need to know you and that you need to know. People that would be interested in the work you're doing for the company. People whose agendas marry up to the projects that you are working on. You need to map out a plan according to your company's culture. For example, if you are in a culture where coffee chats are the thing, then set up coffee chats with these senior leaders. You know, get to know them type of agenda. It's very simple. Three bullet points. Hey, I want to share, you know, this project with you. I know it might be of interest to you. And I want to tell you a little bit more about me. And then I want to learn a little bit more about you. So, for example, if you're in a culture where coffee chats are the thing, then you want to set up coffee chats with these senior leaders you have identified 
on your hit list and you want to set up the get to know you type of agenda, you know, three bullet points. Hey, I want to share with you the project that I'm working on. You may be interested based on company objectives and priorities. Also, I want to learn a little bit more about you. And then I want to share a little bit more about me. We haven't really got to connect. And so I want to take out some time and do that. And then you want to gain their perspective for the vision of the business for the balance of the year. You know, you want to ask them questions like what keeps you up at night? i.e. what is their real priority? Mm -hmm. And what are the top three priorities to get done for the remainder of the year? And at the end, tell them if there is any way you can help them, please don't hesitate to reach out to you. That extension of offering help to a senior leader goes a long way. And so again, there is one power player in the organization that I don't want you to sleep on. And that is the admin support. I'm telling you, the admin supporter of your senior leaders and their teams, you should be their biggest cheerleader. You should love them the most. And I don't care how much of a bitch this person is. This is the one person in an organization that you should not care about kissing their ass. And I'll tell you why. These are the ultimate gatekeepers. They see all. They know all. They also run all the calendars of the leaders. So they can get you a meeting. When the senior leader is like, oh, check with Nancy. Yeah, if Nancy like you, guess what? You'll have a meeting tomorrow. If Nancy don't like you, guess what? Oh, there's no availability until January 2020. Mm. That's because Nancy don't like your ass. So listen, you want to make friends with Nancy, Sue, Jane, Paula, all the admins, they are your friends and you are their friends. If you have to bring them food, you know, admins love food, bring them donuts, bring them flowers on administrative assistance day, bring them random candy. You know, they like candy. They always got some candy. Listen, these people are actually the people that keep the organization running from an operational standpoint. If all the admins understood their power, I would be afraid because they can fuck your whole world with a couple of keystrokes on their little computers. Don't sleep on the admins, okay? Now, before we get out of here, in building these relationships, I want you to be intentional, okay? So create a tactical plan for meeting and getting to know the identified leaders that you've taken time to think about who is the influencers and the power players on my team and would be interested in my work. And I need you to make a list and rank them in importance to you and your team, okay? I also, again, I can't reiterate this enough, Make friends with the admins. Please, please, please make friends with the admins, okay? Hello, friends. They should know you on a first name basis. They should be happy to see you when you come by and visit them. And I'm telling you, they got all the tea. They got the good tea. So make you some admin friends. And finally, don't be afraid of any of these people. The senior leaders, the admins, your boss, your peers, your boss's peers, your boss's boss's peers, your boss's boss's boss. Listen, they are just human beings. Listen, we all have to go to the bathroom. We all have to do number two, okay? Ain't nothing really special about any of these people 
except for what we make them out to be and what they make themselves out to be. But at the end of the day, nobody can hurt you. And I know that feels counterintuitive because we have been in the sticky situations of corporate America. Mm -mm -mm. But I'm telling you, everything always turns out fine. You will get so much further if you make nice and make these meetings and tell people about yourself and tell people what you're working on. It's not going to hurt. It's only going to help. You cannot thug this out. You cannot just sit at your desk and get your work done. That's not going to get you anywhere except for another job somewhere else and then another job and then another job. And you're constantly wondering like, how, why, why am I not getting promoted? Why am I not getting recognition? Why am I not? Because don't nobody know your ass. That's why. And your boss is telling everybody that he doing your work because you just sit there with your head down. Wake up. Yeah, I fussed at you. You know I love you. All right, that's your homework. Now listen, I want to hear from you. Especially if you need some help or advice about some specific situations, or if you have some questions about this homework, go to trillmba.com slash coaching to schedule a 30-minute consultation with me, and we can strategize and we can walk through your specific situation. In addition, you can always email me. I love your emails, you guys. Thank you so much. I just, you have no idea. Thank you, everyone who has emailed me. And if you want to email me, do not hesitate. I love hearing from you, okay? So if you have a question, email me that question. I'm happy to either answer the question or I can connect you to the right person if I don't have the answer. And I also love connecting people. I am a super connector. So if there's something you're struggling with, do not struggle by yourself, okay? So trillmba.com slash coaching, or you can hit me up at ask at trillmba.com and submit your question, concern, feedback, good, bad, ugly, whatever. Just don't cuss me out. Okay, y'all? Don't do that. That ain't nice. But no, everybody's been really cool and loving. And I just want you guys to know that I love each and every one of you. And I'm so excited for this journey that you're about to go on in corporate America because you are going to kill it this year. Okay, girl, you got this. So excited for you. So until next time, as always, keep it trill. The Trill NBA Show is a Fair World Corp LLC production. Executive produced by Felicia and Rose Inuha. Sound design and editing by Chris Mann with Pod Shaper. Theme music is Kick Push by Ryan Little. Keep it trill every day, y'all. <laughs>